I've learned my lesson, I am never going to mouth off Mother Nature because she can win. As far as corn warriors and a competition, our competition's been Mother Nature this year, just trying to survive and get a crop in. Kevin, David, get y'all some of this. It's not easy to farm it. That's why you gotta have that. So welcome to season three, Corn Warriors. Get that tanker ready. I gotta figure out how to get you home. I mean, the only thing really affects me is kryptonite. Now, if you can't be the best at it, don't do it. It's June 8th, it's kind of push come to shove. We're basically planting through some of the wet stuff, around a few things. I want everything to be perfect, and especially this year, it's not gonna happen. Ain't that something? That's just two days. Well, my goal is to be a personal best, but our personal best is a world record. I like to have the ability to make it rain. Sides are worse, but hell, it's right here. Right here. Let's go in a little more. Okay. Right here. See them brown ones ain't moving. I think those are eggs, Brooks. Those are eggs. Yeah. I feel like that's the eggs, and that's what'll if all those hatch. That's how population of aphids just get out of control. Yeah. Every one of them are covered. We'll, we'll wipe them out. You ever seen such a thing when they're on every plant? Nope, I haven't. We just got to get it down in here. I've never seen anything like this. 1,200 gallon of wood, right? Yep. Which has got some water in there. Helps if you open the valve. Care to watch that 1,200 gallon mark for me? Usually I fill it all the way up, but yeah. I don't need that much. It's a lot of weight. We're fortunate with our sand. We're blessed with the water. You know, a, a good aquifer that we're able to do specialty crops, watermelons, and um, you know we've been down the seed corn road before and grew that for years and. That diversity there, it's helped us out a lot. It cooled off and we've had, you know, low 60 degree nights and it's just been perfect breeding ground for the aphids. You know, I've always seen aphids walking fields. I see small colonies just, just on a few plants. It's never been a threat to the crop, you know, I mean, never justified spraying. Last night I walked out there uh, across the whole field, and I mean, them things were covered. Just devastating, devastating. I just, I just couldn't believe it. This ain't the first time a corn warrior's had problems with a stress event like this. Dan in that tar spot, I've never really heard him say what kind of yield he thought he could have had. I mean, he would have been creeping right there below 400 probably. And that's, that's devastating. All right, so this field here, we got some agrigode 6572. This was planted May 7th. We got aphids out here too, just starting, not near as bad as the other field. So hopefully we get this one sprayed and you know, it won't be damaged near as much. This is good a spot as any, ain't it? The plant health on this hybrid's been great. You know, was, this is one of the better fields, better emergence, better stands. We got some nice ears. Got some deep kernels. That's what I like to see. When I come out in the field, break that open, you know, that, that's a good sign. I mean, you, you got some deep kernels. You got a lot of weight there. You know, that's what it takes for 300 bushel corn. 
I got the whole David Hula 700 bushel ears the other day, and I don't know if these are quite as heavy. You know, I'm learning a lot about these, very uneducated on aphids. You know, I just made a fungicide application, my last one last week. I think we are killing some of the good fungi, which probably would fought some of this aphid pressure off. I, we think we're learning, you know, and we are, but it's just aggravating when you get this close to the end and she comes in, wipes you out. Let's go kill some of these aphids. This has been a super tough spring on us. Uh-oh, dead or in the door now. I said that we seen a big cloud coming over there and I said, Mother Nature, you are not gonna beat us. We are gonna plant that. Well, it started raining and I said, well, we're gonna see who's more hard-headed, me or you, Mother Nature. Well, she won. I've learned my lesson. I am never gonna mouth off Mother Nature because she can win. See this wet spot? I'm gonna have to spray around that one. We're gonna talk a little bit about our sprayer arsenal, if you wanna call it that. We've got our big sprayer here that does obviously the bulk of the work. My son David put new tires on it because we had the skinny tires for row crop, but the terribly wet conditions, we couldn't get across a lot of it, so. He bit the bullet, spent 10 grand, and uh, we can get across wetter ground with it now. Upside is it looks really cool with those on there too, you know, so that's worth at least five of the 10. Every once in a while, this machine will just throw me a fault and shut stuff off when I didn't tell it to, and it gets pretty irritating, but I got it pretty good. I'm riding in an air-conditioned cab. Most guys that got a rig this nice uh, drive it with auto steer, but I drive it manually. I don't, that would require taking the data from the planner and plugging it into the sprayer, but I'm okay with just driving it. So we just do that way. If you plug it in, I actually think your sprayer blight is a little, a little bit more because that's going off of a line versus me actually steering the thing and actually watching it. Now your corners, I'm pretty good at causing some sprayer blight. Then we downsize to the little sprayer, which has actually been coming in pretty handy here just lately because the big sprayer's got the big tires. We can't get corn planted, so it's had corn chemical in it and we get a field done here or there, but we need some beans sprayed. So I've been doing the in row work with the little sprayer which I can still get a fair amount done. It's got a 60 foot boom, we run nine mile an hour. But the other upside, it's very light. I can get across probably wetter ground than that thing will. This is the last field we planted. And it rained pretty much right after it got planted and the water just sat on top of all the wet spots and it, it choked it out. So it ain't worth a darn in a lot of spots. There's, there's good corn out here, but there's, there's a lot of bad, too. We didn't think we were gonna get to plant it, so I guess we're fortunate we did. We spend a lot of time in the sprayers in the summertime. That's a good portion of uh, our workload, but we make more applications than a lot of people do. That particular sprayer, when we put the skinny tires on, we put a wide drop system on it, and that's also our side dress rig. That sprayer can cover acres so fast that you can cover 100 acres an hour, but by the time you figure your load time moving and everything else, you know it's 50 acres an hour. But if you figure that at custom rates, uh, that rig is running at $350 to $450 an hour, and that's time well spent, and that's, that's what can pay for one of those. This machine does pretty good. I mean, especially with bumps and stuff, it's pretty awesome, but I want a bigger one. And then when it gets wetter yet, we got to go to the ATV. And we've had to border fields with that and get some wet spots done. Uh, we can blow out about 25, just about 25 foot wide, but it'll take care of the spots. 
Having the three diversifies us to be able to get it all done. I think a high degree of profitability comes with having your own spray equipment. Timing is where you make your money. And we can be Johnny on the spot with this stuff. My son either pulls in and sprays it when the planter's almost pulling out, or we have pre and put it on right ahead of the planter, depending on which pass we're doing. Some people have got some good corn, but there's a lot of bad around here. And I think most guys are speculating that corn's gonna go to at least $5. I feel like it's gonna to go to 550. My wife, Kimberly, she reads into that a lot. There's people that think it's gonna to go to 12. That's like bean prices. So that's not, that's not really possible. We'll see. I'm saying we're capping at six bucks. That's, that's me. But I don't have any corn to sell. I didn't plant anything this year. This has been a very challenging spring, as everybody knows. They call it plant 19. In our area, even though the 80-year-old guys have never seen a spring like this, it's the worst they've ever seen. It's the worst that I've ever seen. But, you know, we'll get it done. Some of it won't get planted, and there'll be prevent plant. Well, that ain't a bad thing, because we got a real surplus problem, and that's gonna cure that. So I think in one year, old Mother Nature is gonna cure our surplus. So we've already got better prices, and prices are continuing to go up the way I see it. And for the next at least couple years, usually after you deplete a surplus, you've got better prices to work from. So I'm actually optimistic for the future. Always look for the opportunity in a situation, and uh, if you capitalize on those opportunities, you'll come out on top. I never know where I am anymore. I just, I just see cornrows now. For over 65 years, Brandt has been helping growers achieve better results. We bring the very best plant health and fertilizer solutions to the farm. Through research and innovation, we help growers implement new practices that improve the quality and abundance of food, fuel, and fiber around the world. Brandt, professional agriculture. Visit Brandt.co for more information. part of the next level it's opened the growers eyes to the mistakes that they've been making that are easily fixed if you join next level i'm here to tell you the truth gaining knowledge on so many different aspects of farming what i can get out of next level we go to fields and actually show them the sins of what we've talked about in the winter now we can show hey if you tweak this a little bit more some of that low-hanging fruits is going to become available to you we discuss yield maps soil samples tissue samples how to set up a planter how to set up a combine when to spray what to spray how to spray products to buy we cover it all so we teach them everything we know we all enjoy farming but if we don't make money we're not going to be able to do that this is going to help implement that even to the next step. High shielding guys did what we asked them to do. What better testimony is that? Is it too late to join? Absolutely not. Next Level takes a, a way different approach. We go through soil testing, tissue testing, very, very intensely. I mean, we have went from tissue sampling a little bit to tissue sampling every week, seeing what's working, what's not, what our levels are doing, you know, and then taking that to you. For me, Next Level gives me an opportunity to get re-energized about a crop, forces me to go home and reevaluate what I'm doing. your pivot? It's 101. I'm having to water every night to try to cool the plants now. 
Today was 51 at night, supposed to be 78. I'm 101 and 79 for a load. Killer. But now things look as good as they could. I mean, Randy, today we're only gonna be 79. Oh, I know. Tomorrow I saw that. You're like 51 this morning. Yeah, yeah, gonna be. Well, might even be 49 tonight. That's cheating. Like, That's not fair. It's cheating. Now we're going to kind of walk in some corn and then we're going to walk back toward the pivot point. We'll see what it looks like. Predominantly agricultural on this farm. All right. Let's walk through here. Loading up. We're just starting to get the brown silk. Pollination will be done shortly. See a few blind silks trying, but for the most part, that's it. That's part of that ear flex that we try to get. It always does it every time with some of the stuff that we do. One good way that you can tell it's agar gold 64.99. This hybrid is notorious for ear bouquets. See this bouquet ear? Tries to put on a second ear at the bottom of the same ear. But I've seen it since we've been planting it. So um, just one characteristic of this particular hybrid is you see a lot of bouquet ears. So one thing that we are seeing here is brace roots. And that's not normal. In monocropping, I never see brace roots on high yielding corn. We'll see what this does. You can see where the cable drags through on the pivot. There's a set of cables that come down right by the tires and that drags. It bruises the leaves. That's what that is. All right. As we walk to the outside row that way, we should be close to the pivot point. So be careful. Try not to break any corn. Where the pivots and the irrigation is. The crop looks pretty good. Corn acres, um, if it wasn't under a pivot, it's over. Fat lady's son. So it is what it is. That's farming. Hello. Hello. Hi, Daddy. Hey, buddy. Oh, I'm okay the corn. You want to look at my corn, too? Okay, hold on. You see it? You see that ear? You see that ear right there? Uh -huh. And you see that one? Uh-huh. And you see this one? Uh-huh. You see all that corn? Uh-huh. Hey, tell him what Mama saw yesterday on her leg. Huh? What did, what did Mama uh, find? Mama saw a worm. Mama found a worm? Uh-huh. That ain't good. That's why we sprayed. We kill them. Can you say hey to, to everybody? <laughs> Bye. Hello. Yes, sir. I love you, Easton. Tell Daddy who you love the most. Say, Daddy's man. Daddy's man. That's oh. right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> that was not staged. <laughs> it's pollinated. We'll see what how many keeps, but I have a rodent. See it eating it? Freaking raccoon. But that one's 20, 40 plus. This was a farm that nobody wanted. Well, they remarked that this land's only good for holding the world together. God made it, we can work with it. This is my stress reliever at the end of the day, just to ride and look. The, see the value of water and thankful that I got it to be able to put it out. I put in water, put in irrigation, and tried to be a student of the crop and learn all I could learn. And you know, we started pushing. 
made some mistakes, but we figured out a few things along the way. And, and God's blessed us, I give him the credit. We worked hard, no doubt about it. A lot of risk, it's paid off. We just found a cure for these stupid gnats that you see me swatting, it's awful. Aphids is, we spray for them every year in watermelons. Who would have thought I'd be spraying for them in corn? This is one of my first years using a heavy amount of sugar. It makes a guy think maybe they're attracted to that sugar. Now I want to hit that hole because I'm too far over. I hit it. Ah. That's the way it's supposed to be. I hit that sucker pretty hard. Well, the hefty deal was because I had a lot more experience prior to, and when Randy Dowdy's up there, there's not a lot of speaking time. I've been listening to them, all them guys, for three years now learning from them guys and then I'm sitting on a panel with them. I guess that's why I'm stressed out more this year and it's not because of just being on the Corn Warriors, but I just, I want to show them guys that we can produce a respectable yield, you know. We can do it. I mean, we work our butt off. It's just been a fight this year. I can write Mother Nature a message. I'd definitely ask for a little help. I don't think I'd want to be too rude to her because I got to deal with her for several more years. It's about like my wife. I mean, when she pisses me off, there's a lot I'd like to say, but I don't. Planning in conditions that I don't like to plan in, that's been my biggest disappointment. And then now, for planting in such wet conditions, and then things actually looking better than expected. You get so close to the end and, and here we are disappointed again with, you know, just, it's just been a fight from day one. I hope I never experience a year like this again. Now this is, like I said, this is where 2017 we won. In 2017, we pulled second on the contest corn for Indiana out here. So had some high hopes this year, but I guess the main plan is to keep the corn healthy, keep, keep it alive. <laughs> Aphid control is my, is gonna be uh, my main focus from here on out. Thank you.